Hey guys, Skill on Noodle here. I wanted to create a large sci-fi city scene inspired from things like Halo, Blade Runner, and Star Wars. I wanted to create a large advanced structure set among a dystopian city of shacks and factories. So in this video, I'm going to show you my process for creating a large scene like this, and how I achieved a lot of detail without having to put in a ton of work. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe for more Blender tutorials. I knew I wanted the tower to be the subject of my scene, so I began blocking out my desired shape with some simple cubic shapes. I tried to keep the detail relatively low so that I can decide the styling of the details later and also keep the model as easy to work with as possible while I'm still in the early stages. After creating the basic shape, I started to experiment with some basic textures to try to define some secondary details. When creating a model, it's best to think about it in three layers. The first are primary shapes. These are the basic primitive shapes that block out the entire structure. Use simple shapes like cylinders, cubes, and spheres to really mark this out. Try not to go too detailed right away or else you might get ahead of yourself and end up losing where you're actually at and not have an equal dispersion of details. Next are secondary shapes. I like to think of these as smaller chunks that form the primary shapes and help define the workings of the structure. Finally are tertiary shapes, the small details that make the object feel more real and that create a feeling that this could be built in the real world. Rather than modeling the secondary and tertiary details for the building, I ended up just using textures. I found with creating large structures, it's sometimes easier to load it with those tiny details simply by using chaotic sci-fi textures. And by using some sci-fi panel textures I found on textures.com, I was able to create the secondary shapes that form the structure. I also did this for the tertiary shapes, which is a must because on a structure this large, it just becomes far too much work to add every little detail. It will end up just slowing down your computer and your render. At this point, I also added some ridges to the windows and created a more detailed base for the model. It ended up being really simple modeling with texturing and materials doing most of the heavy lifting. To achieve the tertiary shapes, I used a piece of software called JSplacement. This allowed me to create a bunch of tiny panels all over the structure. It's a texturing software that procedurally generates amazing sci-fi textures. The best part is, it's completely free and easy to install. While this was my first time using the software, I was still able to create amazing results just playing around with the sliders and using its built-in presets. I would highly suggest using this for whenever you're trying to make a hard surface structure that needs those micro details that would be far too difficult to model. After exporting the textures from JSplacement, I moved back into Blender. I used the textures primarily to control both the roughness and normal textures, which gave the feeling that the structure was formed of many different plates and pieces. With something as large as a building like this, you want to make sure the details are scaled well within it. Something small like a fighter jet will have much larger details and be made of larger pieces, but a structure will be formed from many small pieces to form the entire thing. To add the glowing windows to the building, I used a technique I learned from Ian Huberts, whose Patreon is definitely worth subscribing to. It involves taking a picture of city lights or a skyline at night, cutting it into pieces, and then feeding through a color ramp node to add contrast and control the color. I placed it between the window ridges, making sure to use the pieces in a way that wouldn't be repetitive. This effect brought the whole building together and added a flare that I really needed to stand out. Now with my building almost finished, I decided to add more scale to it by duplicating one half of it to the other side, and then I called it complete. To create the dystopian feel and also give off the scale of the large building, I added a city of shacks below the tower. Since these were pretty small in comparison to the tower, I know I didn't need to model a ton of detail. Now, modeling thousands of shacks in a scene would have taken far too long. In cases like this, the particle system becomes your best friend. Using the same technique, I also modeled some pole structures to add variation and visual interest to the field of shacks. I wanted my scene to have depth, so I modeled a simple foreground. I created some simple planes to create a floor and a wall, and I also placed some assets I grabbed off of Megascans, an amazing resource for 3D photo scanned assets. They're super easy to use and come in different levels of detail to save space on your computer and render. For texturing the foreground, I used the basic brick texture along the wall and put a concrete texture on the ground. To add some visual interest to the ground, I decided to add puddles by adjusting the bump and roughness nodes using a noise texture and called the foreground complete. The background was created using image textures of factories I found on textures.com. I went into Photoshop and masked out the background so I could use them as transparent PNGs. Using the Import as Planes add-on, I brought them all into Blender, scaled them up, and added them to the background. Sometimes, it's not about modeling everything. It's easier sometimes just to grab a photo, place it in the background, and it's better than if you ever were to go and model it. I use this technique a lot when I really need to fill up a scene quick. This is where the piece really came to life. I added some planes with a cloud texture on them across all the landscape. This really helped the scene feel larger and helped soften up all the colors and details. With any scene this big, I always add mist. 
Without mist, your scene won't feel nearly as large, or even really feel like it has an atmosphere. To finish off the piece, I brought in the image to Photoshop, adding mountains and clouds and adjusting the color. After some final tweaks, pushing the colors and details, I called the piece finished. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned a little bit about creating large scenes like this and how to turn a concept into reality. Leave a comment below on what you'd like to see next time, and like and subscribe for more Blender tutorials.